Hey, I work for CareZone. Uh, we're also based in Seattle and San Francisco. Uh, we do awesome things, and I would like to talk to you about what we do, but I don't have time because I only have 35 minutes, and I am determined to be the first talk to finish on time so far today. Um, so I've been thinking a lot lately about choices. Um, you know, there are times in our lives where uh, we encounter a fork in the road, and we have to kind of take stock of where we are, where we want to be, and uh, then pick a direction we think is going to get us there. Pick a vector, if you will. See what I did there. Um, now, sometimes, sometimes the choice is easy. Uh, it seems trivial, maybe, or, uh, or obvious. Like, I have a standing policy. If someone offers me a cookie, the answer to that is always yes. But then sometimes uh, it's a little trickier. Um, the choice is obviously important, but uh, we might not even feel as though it's really our, our choice to make. And every several months, uh, for the past uh, couple of years now, actually, uh, I go in for a regular follow-up cancer screening. Um, for those that don't know from Twitter, I had testicular cancer a while back. Now, I could probably choose not to do those things, but it doesn't really feel like it's a choice I have. And before you get too far, uh, feeling bad for me with the cancer and all, I had a lot of fun with my cancer. First off, uh, testicular cancer is highly survivable. And secondly, you get to make all kinds of really horrible puns, and nobody can actually say anything to you because it's like, I, you know, I, I have cancer, so... What <laughs> <clears throat> But my, uh, my wife uh, is a saint for putting up for me, uh, putting up with me during that time. Now, for at least the first few days of this, uh, the puns... <clears throat> the, uh, for at least the first few days, the puns were nuts. Um, after that point, they were just nut, of course. Um, so... Yeah. All right. Um, so, so this talk uh, had its origin um, last year. Um, my friend Terrence, uh, who's one of the organizers for Keep Ruby Weird, uh, he tweeted this at me one day, and I had a choice to make. Now, months before this, at RailsConf last year, I was at a speaker dinner, and I was talking to Terrence and Davey, um, again, organizers of the, of the conference, and uh, I had an idea for a talk. And uh, Terrence knew what I was going to submit if I did submit it. But the problem was that it was way more work than any other talk that I had ever presented. And I really wouldn't have a whole lot of time to prepare, especially since I had some other obligations going on. Now, Terrence was a sneaky guy. Uh, he, uh, he convinced me to submit by saying I could always back out. So what was the idea that I had? Well, when I was a kid, um, I loved Choose Your Own Adventure books. I thought they were the best. And you know, the thing I loved the most about them was that not only wasn't the ending already predetermined, but I got to choose how we got there. And now for an eight-year-old who was just really starting to enjoy reading, um, that sense of control was a really big deal. So the idea that I had was for a choose-your-own-adventure talk. Now, at the time, I had never seen anybody try to give a talk like this. Now, it occurred to me uh, that there could be a very good reason for that. Maybe it's a really terrible idea because there are a ton of things that could go wrong with a talk like this. But we're going to give it a shot and we'll see how it goes. Now, before I go to the next slide, I want to point out conference Wi-Fi has been a little iffy. Uh, so I would encourage you to consider using your phone or if you tether, please, for the love of all that is holy, plug in with a, with a cable and tether and don't just further glut the Wi-Fi bandwidth. So, I can see whenever you all connect. If you pull out your laptop or uh, a mobile device at this point, this thing should work with all current mobile and desktop browsers. I do find the nice thing about developing an app that's uh, intended to serve uh, presentations to developers is you don't have to support IE8, which is a, a nice benefit. Um, so I'll wait. We've got 20-some uh, people on. I can see if you're not on, and I'm going to have my feelings hurt. So I can count you people. All right. So people are still getting connected. We're up to about 70-some online, and so far it hasn't broken, so that's good. Um, so we're going to go ahead and see if we've got the idea at this point. Uh, of the animals that are selected, that are displayed here, pick either cats, dogs, squirrel monkeys, or Venezuelan poodle moths as your, as your favorite animal. And uh, in a couple of moments here, we'll see who wins, and, and we'll go that way. All right. Wow, dogs winning. And here I thought Ruby people were cat people. All right, 
Dogs it is, you can stop voting now. You get to see the dog, and uh, you get to see an extra picture of a dog because, you know, I'm being nice here. All right, good, so we've all, you've got the idea, right? Okay. So, do you remember these things? Now, nowadays I walk right past them. Uh, I don't even most of the time notice unless they have some really cool toys. Uh, but when I was a kid, these things were the highlight of any shopping trip that I took with my parents. Um, and if I had a quarter or I could convince my parents to give me one, you know, I would stand in front of these things and just agonize over which choking hazard I was going to buy. <laughs> and one of my, one of my all-time favorites were these sticky hands. These, these are one of the all-time best vending machine toys, in my opinion. Well, you probably also used one of these. This is just a gel wrist rest, nothing terribly exciting about it. And Many years ago, um, I had one that looked almost exactly like this, and after many years in the sun, it had started to fall apart. So I peeled the cover off, and I made the most amazing discovery. Turns out that the gel, the gel in, the wrist, in these wrist rests, <laughs> that, that didn't take long. Um, the gel in these wrist rests is made from the exact same thing as sticky hands. <laughs> <laughs> except in really massive amounts. Now, over the coming weeks, our office had lots of fun uh, with, this, with this new toy that we had discovered. We even gave him a name. His name was Roderick. Uh, I'm not sure why we called him Roderick. I guess he just looked like a Roderick. But in any case, we would, we would fling him around at each other. We would grab stuff off of our neighbor's desks. Um, it's impossible to overstate, really, Roderick's entertainment value. Um, and one day, we decided to just see how far we could stretch Roderick. So my friend, my friend Jeff. Oh yeah, the, no, so my, so my, so I grab an end, I grab an end of Roderick. And my friend, my friend Jeff grabbed the other end of Roderick. And he started walking across the room. And he got, he got pretty far, I would say, probably, about this far from the podium with Roderick. Now, in physics, in physics there are two kinds of energy. There's potential energy, uh, such as the kind you get when you stretch a slingshot, or you know, you can also store up potential energy by maybe stretching a gel wrist rest across the room. And then there's kinetic energy. And uh, kinetic energy is energy, energy in motion, and it's what you get when you release the slingshot or the wrist rest. And you probably have also heard of this thing called gravity. Now, at about this time, Jeff decided he wanted to let go of Roderick. Um, I remind you where I'm holding Roderick. Now, potential energy, <laughs> potential energy, a lot of you people knew where this was going. Uh, potential energy quickly became kinetic energy, and gravity doing what gravity does, you might imagine what happened next. Uh, I spent the next few minutes curled up in the fetal position while people couldn't quite tell if I was laughing or crying, and truth be told, it was a little bit of both, because it, <laughs> it was pretty funny. Um, you know, on the bright side these days, I have half the surface area for that particular attack vector. <laughs> so, uh, my, point, my point is that choices have consequences, and, you know, we, we tend to think of consequences as a negative thing, but the word literally just means a result or effect. Um, so all I'm really saying is that, you know, that our choices change the world in some way. Because otherwise, what's the point of even making choices? It's a law of cause and, of cause and effect. Uh, it's as inescapable as, as gravity. So if our choices are bound to have consequences, it makes sense we'd want to optimize them. But you know, how do you really do that? with instincts. These wolves are awesome. I think that one wolf, I'm pretty sure that one wolf is, looks like he's, he knows something, the other ones don't. He seems like he's smiling. Okay, right. <clears throat> so we're going to use our instincts. Okay, so here's a question for you. Let's say you're stuck in traffic and the lane next to you starts moving more quickly. What do you end up doing? That took no time at all, right? It's not uncommon. Our instincts tell us to stay put. You might not realize it, but the instinct to stay put is um, really similar to a piece of advice that you may have heard relating to test taking. 
Um, always, have, how many of you have heard, always go with your first instinct? It's much more common if you change your answer to change from a correct answer to an incorrect one. And this is not just parents and teachers that tell us this. Even um, test-taking experts like Kaplan uh, were giving this advice in books that were telling you how to take your tests. But the only problem is it's not actually true. Um, and there are actually decades of studies that prove it's not true. But if, if that's the case, then why do we find this so believable? I mean, why does this misinformation continue to spread? And it really comes down to a phenomenon known as loss aversion. There's this asymmetry in the way that we feel uh, about getting the wrong answer on a test if we had the right one versus getting the, the right answer if we'd previously had the wrong one. Um, if we change from a right to a wrong, we're going to remember that answer uh, a lot more. That situation's going to take a higher, higher precedence in our mind. And that's a big deal because um, losses are about twice at minimum, twice as, as impactful uh, as gains psychologically. So this is why it, it seems to make sense instinctively. Here's another one for you. Let's assume that the following, you people don't even know what I'm asking yet. <laughs> let's, assume, let's assume that this following sequence of X's and O's represents hits and misses in a basketball game. The X's are hits and the O's are misses. Now, do you think this sequence represents someone who's on a hot streak, um, a ch uh, just chance events, or maybe a cold streak or something else? You know, if we, if we look at this, six of the first eight are hits. Eight of the first 11 are hits. But if you pick any point in this sequence, it's just as likely the next character is going to be an X as it is that it's going to be an O. It's completely chance. Good job, audience. Your, your drinking has not impaired your judgment. But it's, it's, it's a perceptual illusion. Um, I can tell you repeatedly the tops of these two tables have the same lengths and widths. You can even get out something and measure them right now if you want to check. It's not going to change how you feel when you look at those pictures. Whether it's tables or basketball streaks, um, your instincts are going to override the reality of the situation. Whether you know it's an illusion or not, it doesn't really change how you perceive it. And this has gone to extremes. Years ago, when Apple released the iPod Shuffle, uh, people started complaining its shuffle wasn't random because they were noticing streaks of songs by the same artist. And so conspiracy theories started springing up. Um, people were suggesting that Apple was taking bribes, various kickbacks, to actually give certain artists preferential play in a playlist. So Apple introduced a feature called Smart Shuffle to the, the iPod Shuffle. Um, it was designed to prevent streaks. It, its whole job was literally to make things less random, to make them more random. So it turns out that our instincts are, are really good at uh, making you know, snap decisions about things like maybe I should run away from this saber-toothed tiger, but they're not so well tuned for making subtle judgments, uh, no matter how much we might feel otherwise. And it's not just uh, the stuff that we consciously choose either. All kinds of variables can influence the outcomes of our decisions. Now some of them are, are internal variables and some of them are external variables. Looks like you all want the internal story. Okay. So the most influential variables are internal. Good. Okay, I can get behind that. You know, all, all kinds of internal, internal uh, variables can, can really mess with uh, how things turn out for us. And for instance, a big one is emotions. So in my younger days, um, I went on more than a few hay rides. And uh, you're familiar with hay, I assume hay rides are a thing here. Um, you know, folks think it's great to load a bunch of kids into the uh, back of a trailer filled with hay, and as a long-time allergy sufferer, I, I never right, quite understood this, but whatever. But on the bright side, you know, there's always a, a bonfire afterwards, and you get to have, like, hot chocolate and s'mores and marshmallows and whatnot. So it had that going for us. Um, now, I'm at a hayride. The hayride's over. We're, we're at the bonfire. And I'm standing off to the side trying to mind my own business, and much to my surprise, two uh, attractive young ladies came by to chat with me. Now, this confused me because I was nowhere near as handsome as the two gentlemen you see in this stock photo. This was me. So, <clears throat> so emotions set in, specifically, specifically the emotion of panic. So I'm, I'm literally at this point, I'm, I'm actually trying to think, 
what would a cool person do if they were in my situation right now? And I don't know where I saw it. It must have been like happy days or something. The only thing I can come up with is that cool people prop their legs up against the wall. You know, they just kind of do this and lean. You know, I don't care. I'm fairly nonchalant. The only problem with this plan, as it turns out, was there was a basement window directly behind me in the spot that I decided to prop my, my, my foot up. So I broke the window and sent shards of glass um, onto somebody's grandmothers who were down there actually prepping hot chocolate for the kids. So that turned out, that turned out pretty well. <clears throat> All right, so I'll talk about something a little bit different now. I tend to assume that the stuff that's obvious to me is obvious to everyone. Um, for a long time, you know, this actually led me to avoid sharing code publicly because, you know, how could anybody find it useful? Um, and it especially kept me from trying to do any conference speaking. You know, at least, for at least two years, I had been filling out those, you know, the, the, the little yearly review uh, where, they, where you have to kind of say what your goals are going to be for the next year or maybe quarter or whatever for your employer. I had been putting down that public speaking was one of my goals. But I hadn't done any speaking, if you didn't count a couple of lightning talks, and I hadn't even made any real serious attempts to do so. And then on January 1st, 2013, uh, I made a resolution and I posted it on my site uh, so that you all could keep me accountable. I picked the entire internet as an accountability partner because I really suck at boundaries. Um, so a couple of weeks later, I had two conference speaking opportunities already booked. My first ever uh, conference speaking opportunity was at Big Ruby in Texas, and that was their first time throwing that conference, so it was kind of a first for both of us. Um, and I'm going to be forever grateful for those conference organizers for giving me a shot since I've never done it before. And as a result of ignoring that little voice inside my head, I ended up getting to visit Moscow later that year. And I got to keynote RubyConf later that year, even though I had privately, I hadn't told anybody this, set that as like a five-year goal. Uh, I got to go to Barcelona last year uh, to speak at Full Stack Fest. You, can, you might notice Matt's is in the audience looking super engrossed in what I have to say, too. <laughs> I, I love that photo. It's, <laughs> he's like, making Ruby. Um, and uh, most recently, I got to go to RubyConf Australia. Uh, more importantly than that, I got to hold a koala, which is pretty awesome. It's as awesome as it looks, let me tell you. So, but most importantly, more importantly than any of that, I got to meet so many new friends during all of these travels, uh, and they've all, you all, have enriched my life beyond measure. And all of this happened not because I have any special ability. It, it happened because I chose to ignore that little voice inside my head that was saying, what will other people think of you? I love this quote. We would worry less about what others think of us. We realized how seldom they do. So it turned out, really, that even though I was saying they were different, the hayride and the speaking thing had a few things in common after all. Um, I didn't recognize this until a lot later. But almost every time I've opted to behave in some way that's, that's inauthentic to who I really am, just because of what someone else might think, I've missed out on something. Now look, I'm not you. This is not a prescription for what you need to do. Um, the patterns you might see in your life are different than the patterns that I'm going to recognize in mine. But I promise you this. You are going to spend the rest of your life living with yourself. And if that's the case, maybe it uh, makes sense to take some time to try to sort some of these patterns out. So, which one are we then? That's an easy one, isn't it? All right. Now, when we say we're agents, we don't mean we're like Horatio Cain, though I think we can all agree that would be awesome. What we mean is agency. We're talking about agency. It's, agency is, is the power to shape the world around you in ways large and small. And it's interesting to note that an agent is something you are as a member of the human race. Um, whether you try to or not, everything you do is going to affect the world around you. Your choices are shaping that world all the time. And it's really interesting um, that it sometimes is unintentional, right? It can be completely involuntary behavior. It doesn't, doesn't mean you're not an agent. You're not, you don't have agency. And if you contrast this with, uh, with victim, uh, well, what do I mean by victim? I don't, 
I mean a victim mentality. Obviously, there are people who are actually victimized, and I want to be sensitive to that fact. There are people who um, really have been victims. What I'm talking about is an acquired personality trait, and it's, 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 it's a lear something you learn um, that makes you believe you have no in influence over the outcome of situations. Now, if it's learned, then I believe that it can be unlearned. And even in situations where you really are victimized, you can choose not to be a victim, choose not to let that victim mentality take over in your decision making. Now, I've been volunteering as a counselor for uh, about seven years now. And I've dealt with folks in some pretty rough situations and, and some that are pretty far towards the, the other end of that. And in my experience, there's often very little correlation between whether that person has been victimized and whether they actually are exhibiting a victim mentality. And I've gotten pretty good at guessing when this is gonna be an issue, something we're gonna have to deal, deal with. Um, people who, um, yeah, you're already going there, aren't you? All right, we'll give you a second. It's okay, I need another drink anyway. Thanks for your patience, folks. I'm battling a little bit of a, a, little bit of a cough, so. So, interestingly, um, people who feel powerless usually resort to being passive aggressive. Um, they have difficulty acknowledging, oh look, are you also, <laughs> you changed, yeah. Very good, A for effort. <clears throat> because they have difficulty acknowledging their anger. They don't process their anger uh, directly because they don't feel good about themselves either. So it tends to, it tends to come out in very strange ways. Now, there are situations uh, that we genuinely can't control. You know, uh, things happen, uh, life happens, but uh, we should be looking for the things we can or even that we did control. Uh, again, this is another good quote. If it's never our fault, uh, we can't take responsibility for it. If we can't take responsibility for it, we'll always be its victim. So this is something I have to remind myself of time and time again, and I also have to tell the people that I counsel. If you can't control the outcome, you can still control your reaction to it. The point is that you are an agent, and agents make choices, agents choose. Uh, I'm gonna make a guess that a fair number of you in this room uh, recognize these two images. Um, they are the symbols of the Alliance and uh, the Horde. They're factions in Blizzard's MMO World of Warcraft. Um, yeah, it's okay. I, I appreciate the awe from some, somebody sympathetic in the audience. How kind, right? So years ago, I played a lot of World of Warcraft, and I mean like a whole lot of World of Warcraft. This is a screenshot of a friend and me posing with King Magni Bronzebeard. Uh, we were the only two dwarven Grand Marshals on Argent Dawn, and if you know what any of that meant, we should probably talk later. Um, I swear there's a point to this, we're gonna come back to it in a minute. Um, so we're agents, and agents choose. We're always making choices. Uh, and we're making them whether we're conscious of it or we're not. So even choosing not to choose is a choice. Give me a second here. This is That didn't take long, did it? Well, it doesn't show on, unfortunately. It doesn't show on Chrome. This totally works on Safari. You can see the emoji. <coughs> so, we make so many choices without realizing it. Um, when I was playing World of Warcraft, oh, I'd like to take a moment to remind you all, there is a code of conduct at this conference. I have no idea what you are going to do, uh, but please, don't make me regret this decision, <laughs> this choice that I have made. Okay, so I mentioned I played a lot of World of Warcraft. Um, at the height of my, my play time with World of Warcraft, um, I was playing uh, player versus player. Uh, back then it was uh, something that was called the honor system. It was, um, you played on battlegrounds and it was basically a time in gave you effort, gave you reward back out. Um, and I achieved the rank of Grand Marshal, I mentioned earlier. At the height of that rank up period, this meant that in addition to the job that I was working every day, I had to play a minimum of eight hours a day to earn enough uh, honor in this system to continue to rank up to get this rank. 
And it was to the point where I had actually started at a new job. And uh, on my very first day on the job, it was the, gonna be the last day of my honor grind. And, uh, and on that very last day, uh, or very last day of the honor grind, I, was, I had only slept two hours that night. And I went into a meeting with my new boss and my new coworkers and was actually dozing off in this job. Um, and I came to realize that I was using my investment, my rewards in this game <clears throat> as, uh, I gotta stop, I can't help you. I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised you all haven't figured this one out yet. Oh, Adam left. Adam, you're not helping me much. All right. So, at the height of this, I was realizing I was using this as a surrogate. I was using this as a surrogate for not feeling like I was going anywhere in my job. I had been miserable in the last job, which was why I started a new job. Uh, and I was doing this because I needed to feel that sense of accomplishment. Um, and so, we work all day sometimes, and we, we run out of time, right? We don't have time to do, uh, do the work that, uh, that we wanted to get accomplished. And so we think, we think maybe we, we suck at estimates. Um, but we, it's not that we suck at estimates necessarily. Oftentimes, it's that we actually made choices to be distracted. We fire up Slack, we fire up IRC. Um, we, we run Twitter or maybe Facebook or, or whatever during the day. We could browse Reddit for the latest uh, Destiny PvP tips. That's a personal problem. Um, my, my point, though, is that it's good to make choices, and it's better, it's better to... Yes, there are private messages. You figured it out. Um, <clears throat> so we choose to be distracted, right? That's the point. We do things like this, and then we wonder where our time went. And it's great to make good choices. It's even better to understand why you made them. But it, it is the best to understand that there are choices you made that you didn't even realize you made, and that you had influence over the outcomes that you've seen. Even, look, even some good choices might not be the best choices. Uh, for instance, I'm, I'm speaking entirely hypothetically here, of course. Maybe you've got writer's block because you're preparing a talk. And, uh, Maybe you just decide to build a fully functional chat application for a single, for a single slide um, <laughs> instead, of, instead of working on your talk. Right. All right, get your last chat in. We're moving on. Have I made my point? Is it easy to get distracted? Incidentally, um, Jonan, this is my meat slide. Um, he has amazing hair. He has absolutely amazing hair. Okay, so it's, uh, there's a word for this, um, uh, for being deliberate, and it's intentionality. It's actively choosing your choices. And it's my hope that if there's some area of your life where you've been a little less than intentional lately, um, before today, that uh, you're going to leave here determined to change that. And look, I, I didn't know how this was going to go when I first started building this application, uh, when I said I would build this presentation. I didn't even know how it was going to go when I got up here in front of all of you. Um, there are a whole lot of slides in this talk that you didn't see due to the choices we made today. And plus, I wasn't sure the Wi-Fi was going to cooperate. Um, did we choose wisely? Um, I mean, that's really the thing. Uh, the, the real adventure is in, is in not knowing how the story's gonna end, isn't it? Thanks for your time. So, I, What's the best slide in my presentation that you didn't see? I don't, that's an awfully subjective question, isn't it? That you didn't see. 
Make a choice, Ernie. Up or uh, down? Probably. It's probably. Let's see if I can find it quickly. It's the meat slide. I know the answer. It's the meat no, slide. It's a, you already saw that. <laughs> the question was, what is the best slide that we didn't see, right? Um, I don't know. That's, that's a hard one. That's super hard. Uh, let's say that it is... Nobody ever chose that. Oh, look at you trying to vote. I, I, I was there for like a second. Actually, this is my favorite slide, and it's self-serving, right? But um, I got a chance to work. Uh, I had the condensed startup experience, uh, and I worked in a San Francisco startup for about five, six weeks. I had this picture with my friend Ben Schofield. I was super psyched to start working with him. And uh, six weeks later, the, the company closed its doors. <laughs> so... Uh, that actually, that actually is probably my, my favorite slide, but only because it shows that you can't, even with all the choices you make, sometimes you get screwed. Um, other questions? The, 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 question, the question is that uh, I volunteered doing counseling, and the question is, like, can I explain it more? Yeah, so counseling is something where you do where you sit down and you talk to another person <laughs> about their... No, so it's, it's something that I do as part of the church where I go, actually. Um, but it's not specifically like the guy that I'm counseling right now is agnostic at best, atheist most days. Um, it's just an outreach that we do. That's all. Uh, what is the tech that I use to build this? That's a good question. Um, this is open source. This is uh, an app that I built called Venture. Uh, it's written in Elixir. There's actually no Ruby in it. Um, it's Elixir. It's Elixir, <laughs> Phoenix, and React JS. Um, and it is it is on uh, Ernie slash Venture on GitHub. So go check that out if you want and play around with it. Um, anything else? Anybody up top has any questions? I know the introverts are up there, so. Okay, uh, I don't see anybody else. We're good. Uh, I have stickers. Come, come say hi to me. I don't bite. I might give you germs if I hug you, but you can totally have a hug. Free germ hugs. You heard it here first. Another round of applause, please, for Ernie Miller.